Hello everyone. Welcome to this video. In this video, I'm going to discuss about how we can perform object detection on top of our custom data with the help of YOLO v5. If you don't know, YOLO v5 is an state of the art object detection model. So with the help of this particular YOLO v5, we'll be learning how we can perform object detection on top of the custom data set. So in this particular video, I'm going to discuss each and every component of this particular YOLO v5, like how we can set up this particular YOLO v5, how we can prepare our custom data, and on top of this custom data, how we can efficiently utilize this particular YOLO v5 model and how we can do the custom training operation. So after the training, I will also show you how we can inference on top of our custom data. Even I will also show you the live prediction with the help of web camera. So this is going to be completely end-to-end -end discussion. So make sure you are watching this particular video till the end and I hope at the end of the video you'll be learning each and everything about object detection with the help of YOLO v5. So instead of talking too much, let's start with our agenda. So first of all, let me write down all the agenda actually I'll be covering in this particular video. Then I'll be starting with our implementation. So at the very first, I'm going to discuss about uh, YOLO v5 okay but exactly this yolo v5 i will also show you the official uh, github repo of this particular yolo v5 okay then after that i'll be showing you how we can set up yolo v5 then we'll be learning about how to prepare training data Then after that, we'll be learning about custom annotation. So what is annotation? I'll uh, discuss each and everything because whenever you are performing any kinds of object detection task, first of all, you have to uh, perform the data annotation. That means you want to generate a label of your image and that particular label with respect to the image actually you will be giving to the model. Your model will be learning about the object. So that is why actually custom annotation is very much required. And here I'm going to discuss about some of the open source tool you can use okay, for the annotation purpose. Then fifth, I'm, I'm going to show you how to configure YOLO model. Then I will also show you how we can start the training After training, we'll be discussing about the evaluation. Then we'll see that uh, the test inference. Then at the last, I will also show you the live object detection part. Detection with webcam. And here I'm going to use single image prediction. Single image prediction. And at the last, I will also show you how we can, uh, how we can create a web application, okay, web application. So we'll be creating one web app uh, so that uh, if someone is using your application and uh, they're actually, they'll be doing this kinds of object detection task. So yes, guys, this is the uh, agenda for this particular video. And now I'm going to discuss each and every component in detail. So make sure you are watching this particular video till the end. So first of all, let's try to see about YOLO v5. So if you want to know about YOLO v5, so you can search on Google YOLO v5, okay, YOLO v5. So that is the official GitHub actually will get of the YOLO v5. So YOLO v5 is nothing but it's a state of the art object detection algorithm. So it is having lots of variant. If I show you the model view, as you can see, it is having lots of pre trained model variant. So it is having YOLO v5 N model. That means this is the nano model. It is having another model called YOLO v5 S model. This is the smallest model. M means this is the medium model. L, L means this is the large model and so on. Okay. If you check this particular model, uh, this size is increasing as well as the parameter size is also increasing. Now, you have to choose the model with respect to your task. Let's say, now let's say you want to uh, create an application 
and that will predict real time so you don't want to get any kinds of lagging during prediction so at that time you can go with lighter model that means the smaller model because it is having lesser parameter so they are actually will get uh, like very fast speed but whenever you are worrying about the accuracy you are not worrying about the speed at that time you can go with bigger model let's say you are working in the medical domain their accuracy matters a lot instead of the time so that time actually you can use bigger model so with respect to your task actually you have to select the model but in this particular uh, video i'm going to use this particular model called yellow v5s model so here the problem statement i'm going to solve uh, with the help of this particular model it can be easily solved i'll discuss about the problem statement even i will also show you the data set which data set actually i'm going to use in this particular video but uh, here you can use any kinds of data set I will show you the data set uh, hub as well, like where you will get the data set, all kinds of data set actually you can download and you can perform the object detection on top of it. So yes guys, this is the brief introduction of the YOLO V5 and you can also see the benchmark of this particular YOLO V5. So it is having lots of uh, version actually, YOLO V5, then YOLO V6, V7, V8, currently actually V9 also came in the market. So YOLO V5 is a pretty good model. You can see the benchmark. So it is having different, different variant as I already told you. So here you can see the COCO AP score. That means the average position score with respect to the, all the model variant and as well as their speed. Okay. Uh, on top of this particular GPU. So guys, here you can see the benchmark table. So you can see the different, different model variant. Actually, they have uh, trained and they have collected the AP score as well as the faster speed. Okay. On the GPU. So you can see uh, all the model like uh, YOLO V5, N model, S model, M model, okay, all the model performance you can see here. So it's like pretty good model, you can use it if you are having any kinds of object, object detection tasks. So you can use this particular YOLO V5 model, okay, on top of that. So most of the tasks actually it can solve very easily. So guys, now let's try to see how we can set up this particular YOLO V5 and how we can perform object detection uh, with that actually. So for this, I already prepared one... Uh, collab notebook for you so let me show you this particular collab notebook yeah so all the steps actually i have mentioned here so i will share this particular code in the resources section so there actually you can uh, download this particular file and you can execute from your end so if you want to use this particular yolo v5 and if you see here yolo v5 is the research from alternatives so this is the organization they have proposed this particular model and this is not just a model actually they have also created one framework okay the say uh, they use the same name called yolo v5 and this is the official repository of this particular YOLO v5. So what you have to do, first of all, you have to clone this particular repository. Then after that, you have to install the requirements actually they have shared with you. Okay, so this is the requirements actually. So these are the uh, library and tool actually you have to install. Then you will be utilizing this particular YOLO v5 in your system. So first of all, what I have to do, uh, I have to open up one collab notebook, so which I have already opened. Now here, you just need to select the GPU as a runtime. So let me select the GPU as a runtime. So I'll just click on the change runtime type. And here just try to select the T4 GPU. If you are using free collab, so by default you will get this particular GPU. But if you are also using collab pro or any other collab subscription, so you can get A100 GPU and V100 GPU as well as the T4 GPU. Uh, sorry, sorry, L4 GPU. So here I'm using free collab. That's why I'm going to use this particular T4 GPU. Now I'll be saving this particular T4 GPU. And here I'll connect my notebook. So guys, as you can see, my collab notebook has connected and here I got the virtual RAM and virtual disk and virtual GPU as well. Now what I have to do, first of all, I have to clone this particular official repository of the YOLO v5. And if you want to clone, so this is the command git clone. And now you just need to get the link of this particular repository. So just click on the code and copy the link address and just try to mention it here. So I already mentioned. Now after that, actually I'm redirecting to this particular folder called YOLO v5. Okay, now let me show you. So if I clone this particular repository. So guys, uh, my repository has been cloned. Now if I refresh, see guys, this is the YOLO v5 repository I have cloned. Now with the help of this particular CD command, CD means change directory. I'm going inside this particular YOLO v5 directory. Now if I just show you my present working directory, if you see I'm inside YOLO v5 folder only. Now inside YOLO v5, I'm having this particular file called requirement.txt, okay? This particular file actually I need to install. Now if I want to install this particular file, so I have to execute this particular command called pip install hyphen qr requirement.txt. So it will install that particular requirements in a quiet mode. Then after that, I'm just importing the torch library and I'm just checking the version of the torch and all, right? So let me install and show you. If the installation is successful, that means uh, everything will work. And if you are facing any kinds of issue, so definitely you have to fix that one. 
but I believe you won't be getting any kinds of error because I already checked this particular uh, notebook and it is working fine for me and I hope it will also work fine for you if you are following me so far. So let's wait guys. So I'll come back once this installation is completed then I will show you the import statement. So guys as you can see my installation is completed and here is the torch version I got and the CUDA version I also got which is nothing but 12.1. So you can check this particular version. Let's say whenever you were setting these things in your local machine, that time you have to take care of this particular version. So make sure you have CUDA 12.1 in your system. Okay. Otherwise it will get some issue. So guys, it is installed successfully. Now what I have to do, I have to prepare my custom data. So custom data wise, actually I'm going to use here sign language data. I think you already know what is sign language. Sign language is nothing but it's just a sign. Okay. Sign of a language. Let's say there are some dumb people. They can talk and they can express their actually language. So what they use actually, they use this kinds of sign activity. Let's say if they're doing like that, that means they're trying to say hello. If they're uh, doing like that, that means they're trying to say uh, thanks. Okay. So this is the sign language actually activity. So here I already have some sign language data with me. So let me show you the sign language data. So guys, this is the data I already prepared. Uh, I'll show you how we can prepare this particular data and where you actually will get uh, these kinds of image actually. So this image actually I collected with my web camera. So you can uh, open up your web camera and you can uh, click this particular image. Okay, let's say you just try to show the activity of the sign language and you just capture this particular image. With the help of OpenCV also, you can write lots of automatic script. Like uh, if you just uh, open up your camera and it will automatically capture your image and you just need to show the move. So that's how actually I collected some of the image. So in the training folder, I'm having 120 example. But whenever you are doing your actual training, so make sure you have lots of image here, okay? Just to show you the training demo, I just kept 120 example. But make sure whenever you are training your actual model, you are increasing this particular image size. Now here, if you see guys, I'm having different, different image. So this is called actually please. So if you do like that, that means you are trying to say please. So here I'm having six level. So you can see please, thanks. Then I'm having no. Then hello. I love you. Then uh, yes, okay. I think yes is also there. Somewhere yes is also there. Let me show you. Yeah, so you can see yes is also there. So now let me show you all the label one by one. So this is nothing but this is thanks. So if you do like that, this, that means you are trying to say thanks. And uh, if you do like that, that means you are trying to say yes. So this is the American Sign Language. But if you are doing for the India or any other country, there this activity will change. Okay, you can search about... Uh, this particular sign language on Google. Let's say sign Indian sign language. Okay, if I search for Indian sign sign language, you will see Indian sign language gesture would be a little bit different apart from your uh, American one. See, so you are having lots of sign language. You can visit a uh, website. You can visit different different link, and you can try to learn how to express for the Indian sign language. But here I'm going to use this particular American sign language. Okay. So this is the American sign language. Okay. And here I collected only six level. Now you can see this is the yes and this is the please. So if you do like that, that means you are trying to say please. And uh, if you want to say thanks, so you have to uh, show like that. That means thanks. And uh, if you want to say, let's say no. So you just do need to do like that. That means no. And there is another one called hello. Okay. As you can see. Okay. I, I think I forget to show you the I love you one. See, if you want to tell I love you, so you can show like that. And the last one is the hello one. So here is the hello. Okay. It's like very simple. So this uh, six level actually I collected with the help of my web camera. You can also collect uh, with your web camera. Okay. It's like very easy to collect. Now you can also get the data from different, different website as well. So you can also visit something called Kaggle.com, Kaggle dataset. Okay. Kaggle dataset is also having lots of sign language data. So here you can search about sign language sign language okay image see guys you are having lots of sign language as you can see lots of sign language data now you can download any kinds of sign language data and you can use it in your project apart from that you can also use something called roboflow universe so you just need to visit this particular website called roboflow.com so roboflow is a computer vision platform so here you can perform all kinds of job inside computer vision so for the data annotation purpose, I'm going to use this particular RoboFlow website. Okay, I'll tell you how we can use this particular RoboFlow for the data uh, uh, data annotation part. So make sure you have one account. So I'll, I already have, a, have a one account. So I'll just try to log in with my account. So you can create the account with the help of Google account. So it will take only one minute to create your account. 
So please try to create the account. I'm not going to show you like how to create the account because this is like very easy. Then here you will see something called universe option. Just go to the universe. And in the universe, actually, you are having, see, that much of data set, okay, that, that many of data set, okay. So now you can search any kinds of data set. Now let's say you want to do sign language. So you can search for sign language data. And here is the search button. So you will see different, different sign language data will come. See guys, different, different sign language data will come. Now you can also dial, directly download this particular data. So now let's say I want to use this particular data. I'll click on this particular data. Now here, if you see, uh, now here, if you see one option called download data set, just click on the download data set option. Now here, you have to download as a zip file and just try to select the format. So here you have to select YOLO V5 because here we are using YOLO V5 model. So here is the YOLO V5 PyTorch. So you have to select this particular option and you just need to click on the continue button. So it will start downloading. It will automatically zip everything and it will start downloading. See, it has started downloading. That's how you can also get the data from this particular RoboFlow universe. So not only sign language data, if you want to do any kinds of thing, any kinds of projects, all kinds of data are available. Let's say I'll show you. Let's say you want to do uh, card detection, then player detection, okay? Then uh, painting detection, card detection, okay? Then you are having also, let's say people detection, all kinds of, see, industry safety detection, all kinds of data are available. Just search over it. any kinds of data. If you're looking for, just try to search over RoboFlow Universe or else you can also search over this particular Kaggle website. So here actually most of the data you will get. And if you're not getting the data, that time you have to collect your own data. But collecting data is very much costly task. So for this, you need time, you need lots of uh, like manpower. But first of all, I will suggest one, whatever project actually you are doing, try to find the data set over the internet. So that's actually you can get the data guys. So I already uh, show you my data set. This is my data set. And I already done the annotation. See, these are the annotation file. These are the TXT file because these are the annotation file. I'll show you how to generate this particular annotation file. But before that, first of all, let me sh uh, show you why this annotation is really required for the object detection. So for this, I'm going to open up my blackboard. And here, let me show you one demo. So let's say here you have one image. So this is one image. In this particular image, let's say you are having one cat image and you just want to detect this particular cat. Let's say this is one cat. I'm not good at drawing. So just try to consider this is a cat. And let's say there is a person also. There is a person in this, in this particular image. So what you have to do for, uh, with the help of object detection, you have to detect this particular object. So let's say this is a cat. This is a cat. Okay. And this is a person. This is a person. So how your model will locate that particular object initially let's say you are initially you will having lots of data like initially you will be having lots of images lots of images now here you are using one model called yolo v yolo v5 okay yolo v5 this is the model so during training what you have to do you have to feed this data set definitely to the model but how your model will identify okay whether it's a cat whether it's a person for this, this annotation is required. Annotation, you can also talk talk, uh, talk about labeling. Let me write down labeling. Okay. So what is annotation and labeling? I think you know. So I think you know about supervised learning. In supervised learning, what we use to feed in the model, we used to give the X data as well as the Y data. So X data is nothing but my independent variable. Y data is nothing but my dependent variable. Or we can also talk it as label okay so i also need to prepare the label of this particular image file so how to prepare the label let's say the uh, here i'm having one cat here i'm having one cat so let's say this is the cat so first of all i need to annotate this particular cat as a cat let's say i'll create a bounding box and i will define as a cat okay this is the cat now let's say here i'm having one person i'm having one person i will also annotate this particular image as a person okay that means i will create a bounding box i'll just name it as a person then it will generate one annotation file. That annotation file is nothing but it's a TXT file. It's a TXT file. I already showed you, I think. Now, this is the TXT file. If you see in the training folder, I'm having the image. With respect to the every image, I'm having the TXT file. That means the annotation file. That means the level file. Now, if I open this particular TXT file, you will see some information is there related to our data. Now you can see here you will get some of the coordinate point with the label. See guys, here you are getting some coordinate point. That means this particular four coordinate point. Let me show you. So this four coordinate point actually you are getting. So this four coordinate point you are getting here. So one coordinate, two coordinate, 
3 and 4. So this 4 coordinate that means the actual level location. Okay, you are getting the actual level location. So let me open this particular file again. So here you can see you are getting that particular actual uh, object location and the object object label. Okay, that means the object name in a numerical representation. So here 5 means it is just defining as a 5. I think you have heard of something called label encoding. Let's say you are having six different objects. Okay, let's say you are having hello, then yes, there's no, then I love you. Okay, then please and thanks. Okay, six different lab, uh, label you are having. Now you have to define the integer encoding. That means the label encoding for each of the label here. So let's say hello would be assigned as zero, yes would be assigned as two, no would be assigned as uh, uh, two, and I love you would be assigned as three, please would be assigned as four. And tax would be assigned as 5. So that's actually a level encoder happens. So you can see here it is assigned with 5 here. It is assigned with 5. Now, what this 5? What exactly this 5 is? So if you want to know about the 5, like what 5 is representing, so you can open up your data again. And there is one file actually we'll get called data.yaml file. Now let me open this particular data.yaml file. I'll open it with the help of Notepad. So here you will see that particular label name, actual label name. So see guys, this is the list of the label I'm having, six level. Uh, you can see NC, that means number of uh, classes is equal to six. And now you just count zero, one, two, three, four, five. That means five means, okay, five means it is yes, okay. You can see it is five, that means it is yes. It is trying to say yes location, okay, yes location, that means yes coordinate point, okay, yes coordinate point, yes location. Now with respect to that, if you are getting zero, that means it's a hello. If it is one, that means it's a I love you. If it is two, that means it's a no and so on. And this is the image directory location. If you see here, this is the image directory location. So inside training email, training folder, I'm having the image. Inside image, I'm having all the images. Same I'm having for the, let me show you. Same I'm having for the validation as well. So this is the folder structure. Okay, this is the folder structure for the YOLO v5. You have to prepare. So this is the folder structure. Now for the testing also, I'm having the same format. Now you can ask me how to generate this particular folder structure automatically and how to generate this particular data.yml file. So no need to worry, I will show you the annotation part. Once annotation is clear, you can easily generate this particular uh, folder structure and this particular file with the help of RoboFlow platform. Now, first of all, what you have to do, I already told you, first of all, you have to collect your data. Okay, first of all, you have to collect your data. Let's say you have collected your data and your data set is ready. Now, what do you have to do? You have to upload this particular data to the RoboFlow platform. Let's say these are my data I have collected. Just, just assume these are the data I have collected. So here you can keep your actual data, like all the data you have collected. Just, but just to show you, I kept these are the example only. Okay. Now what you have to do? You have to logging up with this particular RoboFlow platform. So I already showed you how to log in with this particular RoboFlow platform. So once you log in, you will see this kinds of interface. So guys, if you open up this particular website initially, you won't be getting anything. Previously, I did some project. That's why this project is coming here. So let me delete this particular project because uh, previously I did one experiment here with the help of this particular data. So I'll delete this particular project. Then I will show you. Okay, I will again upload this particular data here. Now I think sign language data is not there. Let me check. Yeah, it's not there. So first of all, what do you have to do? You have to create one project here. So click on the button, create project. And here you just need to give the name of the project. Let's say this is YOLO V5. Yellow v5 demo you can give any any name you can give your project name it's completely fine then you have to give the annotation group name okay annotation group name means how many uh, annotation group you are having that means how many level you are having so here i'm having different different level yes i love you okay no yes please thanks so here i'm having six level so all the six name you don't need to give you can give only one name later on you can create let's say i will only give the hello here okay hello here then here you have to select the project type what kinds of project actually we're trying to do here. So here I'm doing object detection. If you're doing classification, instance segmentation, key point detection, you can select it. So uh, going forward, we'll be also learning the uh, instance segmentation, how we can perform the instance segmentation and all. But as of now, I'll be selecting this particular object detection. Now I'll just create this particular project. Now here, you just need to upload your data. So here is my data guys. So what you have to do, just press control A, select all the data and just try to drag and drop here. So here I'm having 30 images. 
but uh, whenever you are uh, collecting your actual images so it would be more than 30 images just to show you i'm just keeping 30 images here now here uh, you just need to click on save and continue so it will upload all the data in the RoboFlow platform then you can start annotating on top of this particular data now see guys you are getting some of the option so just try to select this particular option manual labeling i'll start the manual labeling and here i will assign the image okay there is a button you can see okay now here you will get the final button called start annotation so i'll start the annotation now see guys this is the annotation tool actually will get now you have to select the part of the object you want to detect now here i only want to detect this particular part that means this particular hand part now what i have to do right hand side you can see different different options so you have to select this particular option called bounding box tool just select this particular option and try to create one bounding box in a good way okay make sure you are completing this particular object so the more good annotation you will be doing the more good learning your model will be right so here this is nothing but hello i'll save this and uh, again i'll go next so this is also hello so here make sure it is hello and save this again first so this is uh, hello again i'll select this particular part so that's how you have to complete for all the image okay you have uh, uploaded here so this is also hello so i'm going uh, doing quickly because i want to complete everything but make sure you are doing in a good way and that's it that is why actually data annotation and data preparation is like very costly task inside computer vision so you have to manually handle each and everything okay but if you have the data training model is very easy i'll show you it is just on the plug and play kinds of things uh, you just need to upload your data in the notebook feed the model and you can easily train that particular object detection model but preparing the data is like very uh, like hard task here so this is also done now see this is i love you so select again and now make sure you are giving i love you here hello you just need to write okay sorry i again need to select it yeah so this is nothing but this is i love you so i love okay i love you so now save enter now go to the next image so this is also i love you then go to the next one this is also i love you so here you can consider any kinds of object you want to let's see if you want to detect car that time you have to select the car and you just need to write the car in that particular label option let's say you want to do person detection at a time just select the person and write the person let's say you want to do a smartphone detection just write smart select the smartphone and just write a smartphone there that's how you can use any kinds of data set here here i'm showing you with the help of uh, sign language but you can use any kinds of data and you can get the data from these are the open source platform okay i already showed you now this is also done i will go to the next image so this is also i love you i'll do it quickly because it will take time so this is now no so here you just need to write no save go to the next one this is also no this is also no this is also no this is also no so here uh, i'm just uh, generating the label i'm generating my uh, actual uh, y variable that means y data that means my label data because this is a supervised learning first of all i have to teach my model this is called no this is called yes this is called i love you and this is the location of that particular uh, object so later on whenever i'm giving any kinds of test data my model will be able to detect that particular part right so this is called annotation data annotation part now this is a please this is also please this is also please please and this is thanks now this is yes this is also yes this is also yes yes so that's how you have to complete for all the image you are having in your folder 
see the last one i have done now if you see i have completed 28 out of 28 now i'll just go back and here you will see add uh, 20 image 28 image to the data set i will click on this particular button now it will automatically perform 10 test split for you okay you don't need to manually do it now i'll just click on add image so this is the button you just need to click now just create a new version of your data and now if you want to perform any processing let's say you want to perform resizing operation and all you can do it otherwise you can continue i'll just do it continue and if you want to perform data augmentation you can also perform data augmentation augmentation means you can generate some more data okay with respect to your real time data so there are some augmentation technique are available let me show you with the data augmentation data augmentation so this is the data augmentation guys let's say you are having one image uh, let me show you one good example i think i can take this particular example let's say this is the original image so this particular image actually you are rotating you are cropping okay you are uh, changing the contrast color so this is called data augmentation you are referring the same image but you are generating some variant of that particular same image okay so this is called augmentation so if you are having less data and if you want to generate uh, some new data you can perform the augmentation so i'm not going to perform any augmentation i'll just click on continue now i'll just create the version of the data Now, once it is done, I'll just export the data. I'll uh, select this particular download as a zip file and format wise, I have to select the YOLO v5 PyTorch because I'm going to use YOLO v5. Now, just click on continue. See, it has started downloading. Now, download is complete. Now, if I show you my data, I'll go to the download folder and this is the data it has downloaded. Now, let me uh, unzip it and let me show you. The same folder structure actually will get so this is my folder now guys see you can see the same folder structure now you can delete these two files it's not required this readme file this is just some metadata of your overflow you can also delete the validation one uh, you can use the test one either you can use validation one so there i kept the test one you can also keep the test one you can also keep the validation let's delete that uh, valid one okay and now see this is my training image so inside image i'm having the images okay and inside uh, this particular levels i'm having all the txt file the annotation file okay my actual level now same for the testing image also i'm having the same thing so this is my image and this is my level and this is that data.yml file it has also created now let me open this particular data.yml file so this is the yml file now we can remove this particular part it's not required now see this is the actual uh, now i can also remove the validation path because validation image i'm not going to use okay now training image I'll, I'll be using for the training purpose and valid uh, test image i'm going to use for the testing purpose testing of my model number of classes six and these are my all the classes now guys my data is ready and i think you got to know how to uh like uh, format your data how to prepare the data how to perform the annotation and all so if i open up my blackboard right now so this part actually i have already completed so i'll uh, i already showed you what is yolo v5 setup i already showed you prepared the data set custom annotation and now let's see how we can configure the model and how we can start the training evaluation testing on the single image live object detection and how to create a web application so this part is remaining right now so now let's go to the notebook okay let's go to the notebook so installation is already completed now here first of all you have to upload your data so what you can do guys you can just make a zip file of your folder let's say this is the data you can make a zip file and that particular zip file you can upload here directly you can upload here directly let's say you can upload here see there is upload option you can directly upload here and you can use use it from here and uh, there is another way you can read the data so what you have to do you have to upload your data to, to your github so let me show you so if you are uploading your data to the github that means you can read the data from the url so i already uploaded my data inside my github so let me show you so if i open up my repository now here i am having one repository called branching tutorial inside that i already uploaded my data sign language data see sign language data so this data actually i have already uploaded so how to upload the data it's like very easy so you just need to drag and drop let's say this is your zip file this is your zip file so you just need to drag and drop here any kinds of repo you can use drag and drop and see it is uploading so once it is done you just need to click on commit changes it will automatically upload so i already uploaded i'll just go back and this is the data i uploaded now i'll open it up now 
just right click on the view raw and just copy the link address and this is the complete link of your data okay this is the complete link of your data now if you click here it will start downloading your data see it will start downloading your data but i will cancel it so what i will do i'll copy this particular link and here you just need to mention so make sure you are giving your link you can also use my link to download the data but it will download my data but if you are using your own data you can upload inside your repository and collect collect this particular link okay otherwise you can also directly upload here both you can do so i'm going to use this particular uh, code snippet so here i uploaded my data and I'm, I'm doing the unzip operation then after that i'm just using my data set now let me show you so if i just execute right now first of all i'm going inside content folder then i'm downloading the data now if you refresh see my data has been downloaded and all the files and folder you can see my training okay training testing and data.yml everything is visible here see the inside that i'm having my image so if you are reading from the url that means you don't need to upload the data set again and again so this is the convenience right but if you are having more data set like let's say more than uh, 100 mb that time actually you can't upload your data set inside the github uh, github will give permission denied error right at that time you can directly upload inside google collab and you can read from here see this is the data now i think you can see now data.yml file is already there right so now what i have to do i already uh, downloaded my data now if you just perform cat operation on the particular data.yml file that means if you want to read any kinds of content of any file you can perform cat operation so this is the command for the linux so in linux actually if i want to read something any uh, any file contents I, I can use the cat command see if i just execute cat command it will show you the all the content inside data.yml now if you see here number of classes i'm having six but this particular model this particular model you can see here it has trained with something called coco data set okay coco data set so what is coco data set as you can see they have trained with coco data set okay what is coco data set you can search about, about coco coco data set so coco is nothing but it's a benchmark data set okay it's a benchmark data set for the object detection so a researcher has already trained this particular model with the help of coco data set this particular benchmark data set and it is having it is having 80 classes this coco data having 80 classes 80 classes 80 classes object it is having but here i am having only six classes i am having only six classes so here what i am doing i am just taking the transfer learning approach that means i will be taking the pretend model okay pretend model this model is already trained pretend yolo model okay yolo v5 model on top of that i will train my custom more uh, custom data that means these six classes okay six classes i'll be training okay so how to configure this particular model right now with my six classes so for this this is the code you have to execute first of all you have to extract the nc parameter that means number of classes parameters so as you can see i'll open up this particular data.yml file with the help of yaml loader now i'll extract this particular number of classes which is nothing but six as you can see it is six now what i have to do uh, inside uh, yellow v5 so there is one uh, folder you will get called model okay let me show you this is the model inside that you are having all the model configuration let's say i'm using this particular model called yellow v5s model i'll open this particular configuration you can see here nc is equal to 80 i already told you coco is having 80 classes so i have to change this particular parameter i have to change this particular parameter with my actual parameter which is nothing but six so how to change it so first of all you just need to copy all the content inside that just copy all the content make sure you have copied all the content and here you just need to paste it you just need to paste it here as you can see i have already pasted in this particular cell all the content now before that you just need to execute this particular magic cell so this particular magic cell will automatically change the parameter in the cell itself right now see guys now nc is equal to instead of giving 80 i have given my n, n uh, number of classes okay this number of classes variable i am getting this particular variable i am giving it here okay now it will automatically change this particular nc parameter and will save this particular file as a custom underscore yellow v5s dot yaml in the same folder now let me execute and show you now if i refresh so instead of changing this particular file it has created another copy of the file called custom underscore yellow v 5 s dot yaml now if i open this particular file you can see this parameter has been changed with the six so that's how i can do the model configuration change right now you can use any of the model if you're using n model x model you, you have to do the same thing only you just need to change this particular nc classes right now my data is ready guys my data is ready everything is ready now what i have to do i have to start the training and if you want to start the training this is the command you have to execute 
there is a file called train.py inside yolo v5 so as you can see train.py is there so all the code they have already written for you so you don't need to write anything you just need to execute this particular file and you just need to pass some of the argument so that's why i personally love this particular yolo v5 it's a plug and play kinds of uh, like uh, package they have created so by executing some of the command you can easily train your model now i'm executing this particular file yolo v5 uh, uh, train.py giving the image resolution size so you can see my image resolution it's uh, if i show you my image data based on the image resolution you have to pass this particular size if i show you my properties if i go to the detail so this is the resolution of the image you can see 640 and 480 so that's why i have given this particular size okay 416 but if you are using hd image that time you can give uh, hd image uh, resolution as well okay but you can give this particular size best size you can mention i have given 16 because i am using free uh, collab if you are having good configuration per CP, uh, machine at the time you can increase this particular batch size number of epoch as of now i only want to train 100 epoch but 100 epoch is not enough for the training make sure at least you are training 500 epoch okay just to get some good output but just to show you in this particular video i'm just training 100 epoch okay now here you have to provide the data.yml file location this is the data.yml file location as you can see data.yml file location this is the location so it will automatically load this particular file and it will get to know where is my image is present where is my annotation file is present okay then you have to give the model configuration the model configuration you have changed so inside my yolo v5 inside models so this is the configuration file custom yolo v5 s.yml now you have to also give the weight that means which model you want to use i want to use this particular model this model yolo v5 s just copy the name and give it here and try to mention dot pt dot pt is the extension of the model okay now you have to give the output location that means all the model actually it will train all the artifact it will generate everything it will generate in this particular folder only now i will start the training see guys my training has started uh, after some time you will see the epoch and all See guys, it has loaded the model and now you can see uh, my and now you can see guys my epoch has started so it is running 0 out of uh, 100 and this is the class loss, box loss, everything you can see here and MAP score. So let's uh, wait once this training is completed I will show you how we can evaluate the model okay and inside YOLO v5 folder you can see it has created one folder called runs inside runs train and this particular folder it is saving each and everything all the results all the like uh, metric even your training model as well as you can see it is saving everything so let's wait guys so i'll come back once this training is completed then i will show you how we can evaluate this particular model so guys as you can see my training is completed and i already got all the classes map score and all and i'll show you how to evaluate this particular model and all so for this i will be using one metric here so now you can see in the runs folder all the artifacts has been generated and this is my best model that means this is my trained model so this particular model i'll be utilizing for the prediction purpose and you can see lots of uh, results and uh, batch images has been also saved here now let me plot one by one and let me show you uh, what you have to uh, like check in the evaluation part now if you want to launch tensorboard and if you want to check all the losses and graph and everything you can execute this particular cell so it will open up the tensorboard for you and it will show you each and everything. So see guys, this is the tensor board and see this is the F1 score. This is the precision curve. This is the, you can see precision curve. This is the recall curve. This is the confusion metric. And this is the results, okay? But it's not properly visible. So what you can do, I can show you another way you can check. Now you can also check the GPU you got or not. So here you got Tesla T4 GPU, it's fine. Now there is one uh, image actually it has generated called result.png. Now let's plot this particular image. So this is the code for this, and this is the location of that particular result.png. You can see it is available inside this particular folder. Result.png. Result.png. Okay, I'm plotting this particular file. Now you can see this is my complete metric. Okay, so by seeing that particular uh, image, actually you can evaluate your model whether it's learning better or not. Now you can see as per my epoch is increasing, loss is also decreasing every loss is decreasing so as you can see this uh, six losses should be uh, like less as per the epoch is uh, increasing that means it should be go down 
and this four metrics should be go up as per the epoch is increasing as you can see this is my app score that means as you can see this is my map score that means mean average precision and this is my uh, recall and precision so you can see my model is learning good initially it was some zigzag issue because uh, initially it happens uh, it will pick up some random data and all but at the end actually you will see it's learning better now you can increase the epoch size you can increase the like data size you will see training would be pretty good now you can see the evaluation that's how you can perform the evaluation now you can also print some of the batch images like see this is your actual batch images okay you can also see the ground truth so these are some ground truth even if you see runtime it has performed some of the augmentation technique you can see so it has uh, changed the brightness it has changed the contrast it has changed the cropping operation and all so yellow v5 uh, by default it will perform some augmentation for you at the runtime now what i can do guys i can show you the actual detection okay on top of my test data i'm having so here is my testing images guys so these are my testing images as you can see inside test image i'm having all of my images so now let's load our model the model we have trained so this model is available inside yellow v5 models sorry not inside model it is inside runs then train and this folder and this is the model but okay this is the base.pt so this is the location i have given base.pt the same image size you have to give and confidence score you can give 0 0.5 and source is equal to test image okay as you can see this is the test image location i am giving so here is my test image location test image location okay inside image i am having all of my test image and i am running one file called detect.py so it is available inside yolo v5 so this is the file called detect.py again every code is written inside detect.py you don't need to write anything it will automatically load it will automatically perform detection for you so now what i have to do i have to execute this particular line now it will pick up all the images testing image one by one it will do the detection and it will save inside the runs folder let me show you okay so detection is done now if you want to see the results so what you can do is can go inside yolo v5 folder and inside runs folder inside detect folder it has created detect folder experiment and see all the detection you can see so this is hello see hello is detecting perfectly uh, with the help of 90% um, confident it is hello now if i show you any other one let's say i love you so see it has detected i love you with 81% uh, confident and that means detection is uh, fine guys i only trained uh, 100 epoch although my see detection is pretty good see no uh, and please also you can see this is please 91 percent confident thanks see this thanks you can give also uh, you can also show you the image uh, now this is for the yes okay that means all the detection is working fine and uh, that's why actually you can do the image level prediction you can also keep single image you can also give multiple image okay this is the image level prediction so if you want to uh, perform camera level prediction so what you can do first of all you have to set up this particular uh, project in your local machine then there actually we can do the camera level prediction so for this what you have to do you have to download only your model so try to go inside training folder yolo v5 results wait okay so this particular model you have to download base.pt so click here and try to download this particular model okay so this model i need to the real time prediction because see collab can't access my web camera so for i have to set up everything in my local machine okay so let me show you guys how we can uh, execute this particular model in our local machine and how we can do the real time prediction and i will also show you uh, how you can create the web uh, web application that means web interface i already created the application i will show you uh, how it can be integrated okay so let me show you so guys i already downloaded that particular model and this is the application i already created uh, for you so here uh, i have created all the user app and everything so what you have to do you just need to open this particular yolo v5 folder and inside that you just need to paste your model the model you have downloaded this base.pt okay this model actually we have downloaded from the collab notebook so this is my trained model and this is nothing but my yolo v5 repository okay i cloned here so this particular repository i cloned here directly i cloned this particular repository okay i uh, just copied the link and here i just done the git color operation either you can also directly download and you can keep it here okay and some of the extra folders and file i created i'll show you what are the changes i have done here but before that i just need to set up this particular project in my local machine okay so for this i'm going to open up my terminal and i will share this code with you in the resources section so from there actually you can download and you can set up with me now here uh, first of all i will open up my base code
Yeah, so this is the VS code. And in the readme file, I mentioned uh, all the setup. Okay, I think I haven't mentioned. So what I will show you, I'll show you the setup one. So here is the. Yeah, so here I will open up my terminal. So first of all, you have to create one conda environment here. So let me create an environment. So you, just, you can write this particular command. So conda create hyphen n. You can name this particular name. So I'll give a sign. Okay. You can specify the Python version. So Python is equal to, you have to take 3.8 hyphen y. So this is the uh, command to create the environment. So let's cre create the environment. Then after that, I will set up everything. Okay, it's done. Now let, let's activate this particular environment. So this is the command you can execute. Now let me clear. Then after that, I have to set up this particular requirement of txt. So how I collected this requirement txt, I just go, go uh, went in the, inside this particular folder and this is the requirement of txt. I just copied, okay? All the requirements I copied and I mentioned it here. So let me show you. And I mentioned in this particular requirements. Okay, see here I mentioned everything. And apart from that, and apart from that, I also need some additional package. So I kept, these are the additional package here. So I need Flask because with the help of Flask, actually I'm going to create the user app, okay? User interface, you can see here, I created one HTML file. So in this particular HTML file, I designed everything, all the CSS and HTML code. And uh, with the help of Flask, actually I will render this particular HTML page, okay? So I have to install, these are the libraries. So what I will do, I'll open up my terminal and I will going to execute this particular command. So pip install hyphenr requirement.txt so it will take some time once the installation is completed i will come back so guys as you can see my installation is completed now uh, i just need to execute my endpoint so endpoint is nothing but this is app.py i created and here is the uh, like app implementation. So here I'm using Flask. So if you already know about Flask, I think you know how to use it. So here I'm initializing the Flask. I written one class, client app class. So whatever user is giving input, that image actually I'm saving as input.jpg. And this is the uh, home route. That means if you are launching this particular application, it will render this particular HTML page, okay, index.html. And if you are doing the prediction, uh, you can do the prediction. So it will uh, execute this particular command. It will load your model. Okay, and it will do the single uh, single image prediction, and this is for the live live prediction. Okay, live prediction. So yeah, let me use my model base.pt. So here everything you just keep it as default. No need to change anything. Now let me execute and show you how this application will be running. So I'll open up my terminal. So here you just need to execute Python app.py. See your application is running now. Just open your Google tab. Uh, here search for port, uh, localhost port number 8080 okay so this is the url you have to search localhost clone port number 8080 and now you can see your application interface so this is the web interface now you can upload any kinds of image and you can do the image level prediction so let's upload one image here so i will upload let's say one image let's say i'm going to upload this particular hello image now let's predict you can also open the terminal and you can see the log. So see guys, detection is completed and you can see the detection right hand side. Okay, that's how you can use this particular user interface and you can um, like detect any kinds of uh, image. Let's say I'll upload the thanks one. So this is like very easy for the user uh, who doesn't know about the coding and all. So they can use your interface to perform the detection. So this is one uh, basics template I created. See, this is the thanks one. Now, if you want to perform, let's say a live prediction, okay, with your camera. So what you have to do? So here itself, you just need to give slash live, okay, slash live and just press enter. So it will open up your web camera and it will do the prediction. Let me show you. So only the change you have to do that particular model, you just need to keep inside the yellow v5 folder. That's it. Okay. And everything you can uh, keep it as same. You don't need to change anything. So after some time, actually we'll see it, it will open up your camera.
So guys, now you can see the detect. Uh, it has opened up my live camera, but it is detecting some uh, see extra things actually. Some extra detection is coming because I trained very less epochs, and in my training image, this kind of background was not there. That's why it's doing some mistake. But if I show you my hand, if you see, it's detecting perfectly. Okay. Uh, hello. Then this is I love you. You have to increase the epoch, then it will detect more actually. So uh, see, I already trained one model actually around 300 epoch. That model, let me just try to run and let me show you. So, so if you're stopping the execution, so what you have to do in the folder itself, it will create one runs folder. You have to remove this particular folder. First of all, this runs folder you have to remove. Then after that, let me open up my code. So there I kept my model. So this is nothing but my model underscore PT. So this model actually I trained uh, 300 epoch more than 300 epoch so this model let me just mention here in the live live prediction okay so instead of base.pt i'm going to use my model dot pt this model actually i'm going to use now let me open up my terminal again and let me execute my app it's running so i'll go back and here i'm going to search for my application and here let's give the slash live So guys, you can see it has again opened up my camera, but still it is detecting some uh, background because uh, my training image not, uh, was not like that. So if you want to get a go robust model, at a time you have to collect these kinds of image also. Now if I show you, see this is hello. Uh, now this is I love you. Okay, so this is uh, thanks. This is please. Uh, so yes guys, uh, that's how actually you can do the live prediction, but you saw that some of the mistakes were there because I trained this particular uh, like model with very less epochs and I was using very less the training and uh, uh, training images and it was only from like one background. But if you're collecting from multiple background, if you're uh, training in a good way, you will see the very good prediction there. Okay, so that's how actually you can set up and you can test your application and here you can give your model that means base.pt. Let me change this particular name. And there actually I was showing my model. That's why I given this particular my model.pt. This is your model, okay? So now you can train any kinds of model. You can uh, test with this particular application. And this is the user interface I created. All the codes I have shared with you. Just go ahead and try to check it out. It's like very easy implementation and all, okay? So yes, guys, I think I have covered all that uh, agenda. So we have seen like how to configure the model training, evaluation, testing, live object detection, and uh, web application part as well. And guys, uh, go, um, so yes guys this is the application building uh, and uh, this is the custom training of the yolo v5 so going forward we'll be also doing the deployment um, we'll be doing uh, the deployment uh, as a ci cd with different different cloud platform and uh, this is all uh, from this particular video i hope uh, you have learned uh, about this particular uh, yolo v5 uh, like training on top of your custom data and how we can um, set up also in our local machine and how we can do the real time prediction real time detection on top of that right so yes guys uh, this is all from my end uh, so thank you so much guys for watching this video and i will see you next time